18 million plus customers, more than 40,000 employees, low cost services, several hilarious commercials, a gecko with the love of being in front of the camera, and the second largest passenger auto insurance company in the nation. That's the Geico story. Let's rewind, like almost 100 years back, around the Great Depression, where a middle-aged insurance executive in San Antonio, Texas, decides to strike out on his own in a bid to make a name for himself. The name's Leo Goodwin. With his wife Lillian, Leo decides to take a leap of faith, and in 1936, Government Employees Insurance Company is born. In order to separate itself from other insurance companies, Leo introduces a revolutionary idea, insurance without traditional agents. This direct-to-customer business model allows the company to pass along lower premiums to customers and still earn a profit. The Goodwins put this idea into action by focusing on insuring government workers and non-commissioned military officers, hence the acronym Government Employees Insurance Companies. A move to Washington, D.C. completes the branding puzzle. Geico opens its doors and the business takes off. The company is growing at a fast pace and in 1948, Geico needs a financial boost to take advantage of more growth potential. In comes this super smart investment banker guy, Lorimer Davidson. He's a friend of the Goodwins and he's got some answers. He finds the needed investors, including Benjamin Graham, a business and investment rock star, professor at Columbia University in New York City, and early mentor to extraordinarily gifted student by the name of Warren Buffett. Buffett's admiration for Professor Graham eventually leads Warren to discover one of Graham's most prized investment opportunities, Geico. On a Saturday morning in January 1951, Young Warren hops on a train from New York City to Washington and lands on Geico's doorstep to learn more about this world-shattering innovation powerhouse. This lucky guy ends up being escorted by a custodian through the closed building to the office of then Geico CEO Lorimer Davison. Davison's conversation with Buffett lasts the rest of the day and it becomes legendary. Mr. Buffett buys his first Geico stock because of this chance meeting, a stock he later coins, the security I like best. Eight years later, in 1959, after 22 years of steady growth, Geico's new headquarters building opens on the Maryland, D.C. border, where you'll see a standing tall today. 1976, after all this growth and mounting success, Geico's underwriting and reserving discipline hits a rough patch, creating financial problems aggravated by a deep recession and a government-mandated wage and price freeze. Soon, the company finds itself on the brink of bankruptcy. Warren Buffett makes a second purchase of Geico stock which becomes another step in the path of Berkshire Hathaway becoming the majority stockholder. With new CEO Jack Byrne in charge, by 1979, Geico is back to the business of being crazy successful. In the 1980s, Geico becomes a trailblazer again when it introduces 24-7 telephone access for sales, service, and claims, a first in the industry. The next year, Geico innovates again with a website where customers could build a quote online and the industry's mind is blown. Remember earlier when we were talking about that guy Buffett? Well, he puts in for the remainder of Geico's stock and in 1996, Geico becomes a wholly owned subsidiary of one of the most profitable organizations in the country, Berkshire Hathaway. This is when things really ramp up. In 1999, a napkin doodle over an ad agency lunch evolves into a green spokes creature. The gecko's popularity among television viewers soars. And in 2005, this little lizard is named America's favorite advertising icon in nationwide voting. In May 2009, Geico officially opens for business in Massachusetts, making Geico coverage and services available in all 50 states. In 2010, Geico's mobile application is introduced, making it possible for drivers to get a quote on their mobile devices. Benefiting from increased online business, Geico zooms past its competitors in 2014 to become the second largest auto insurer in the U.S. At the start of 2020, Todd Combs, a Berkshire Hathaway investment manager who's worked for Warren Buffett for 10 years, takes over as CEO, and that's where we are now. To sum it all up, 80 plus years, starting with the good ones, we've got ambition, perseverance, and innovation. With more than 18 million policyholders deep, we have 10 regional operation centers and many other offices all across the country. That's the Geico story.